what foods are absolutely delicious, but are a pain in the ass to eat. Pomegranates. Pain the butt seeds, and the juice really stains. One time I spent god knows how long opening a pomegranate, finally got all the delicious seeds out, took a bite, and found out I'm allergic to pomegranate and I did all that for nothing. My dad makes a really delicious cherry jam, but he doesn't remove the stones, because spitting them out is part of the experience. Prickly pear, also known as cactus fruit. These are a pain in the ass at every step. Picking them is a huge risk for getting stabbed by cactus needles, peeling the skin off is way more challenging than other fruits, and then they are full of seeds that cause major GI discomfort if you buy it into them by accident. Coconut. Always have hard times breaking the shell and then picking all the delicious coconut meat. Any sour candy with the sugar crystals on them. They're so good until you've had a certain amount and then you just start scraping the roof of your mouth and your tongue raw. My favorite pizza destroys my insides the next morning if that counts. Edit, I don't have any issues with lactose or gluten, I just really like spicy foods. There's a place near me who makes a pizza with 40 cloves of garlic and about a pound of spicy pepperoni on it. It is probably my favorite food but I am the stinkiest motherfucker alive the next day. Edit, to save replying to everyone individually, it's pizza my heart. They have locations all over the San Jose area. The Big Sur and Little Sur both have it with other toppings, but you can also get 40 cloves and add whatever else you want. I do this and add double pepperoni. It's a rare treat for me. All their pizza is really good, even if you don't go for one of their crazier specialties. I'm glad to drive them business because they're awesome. There's a type of wild asparagus in the south of France that's absolutely delicious to eat. But you can only eat it in small quantities, as too much will give you diarrhea. So quite literally a pain in the ass. Ever had a fresh jackfruit? They taste delicious, like a cross between a leaflet al pineapple and a banana. But good god the sap, the sap of a jackfruit is a construction grade adhesive, and it is nearly impossible to open and eat without getting it everywhere. You can just barely get it off is by scrubbing with oil and then soap and water. The trick is to run your hands in oil before you open it. Works like a charm. Or wear gloves and rub oil on them. Most people in the West consider carp to be a trash fish. You catch it, and then you throw it away. But it's actually the first domesticated fish, farm raised for thousands of years in China. It's a delicious fish that takes on the flavor of whatever you decide to spice it with. And it can be cooked in a number of ways. However, it has a million tiny hair-like bones and it is a pain in the ass to clean and fillet. I think that's mostly why people don't eat it when they catch it. It's just really difficult to get all those bones out. I've found the easiest way to deal with those hair-like bones is to either cook chunks of the fillets in a double broiler or to pickle the fillets. Both methods completely dissolve, remove those hair-like bones so you don't really have to mess around with them. They just kind of disappear. But for a large fish, with a good meaty fillet, it's in my top 10 common fish to catch and eat. As a runner-up, gar is also a delicious fish that many people don't consider eating. The hardest part about cleaning a gar is cutting through their armor. And I don't mean scales or skin. I mean it's like cutting through thin steel. You need tin snips or the sharpest knife in the world. But once you get through that, you get two long back straps that firm up and honestly taste like chicken. They have a texture when cooked like a firm chicken breast. And like carp, they also kind of take on the flavor of whatever you spice it with. Neither species tastes fishy at all and are fun to prepare and cook and eat. Certain hot sauces about a day later. I never made the connection between heat going in and heat coming out until one of my roommates commented on it. Now I worry whenever I eat spicy food. I wish she had never told me so I wouldn't have to worry about it. Depending on where you get them, flippin' tacos. It's like this stupid new trendy thing to put them in the smallest possible taco and then mount so much food on it, that every single time you take a bite, half of the food in the taco falls out. Absolutely stupid. Yeah, this isn't a taco problem it's a messy food problem. I love burgers but when you try to get too aggressive with the toppings you end up with a disaster. Sunflower seeds. Take forever to get a handful and gone in seconds. How are you eating them? Everyone knows you pop a handful in your mouth and crack them w your teeth, then spit. Not much work, kinda fun, and the salt is the best part. Crawfish. Being from Baton Rouge, I love a good crawfish boil but the time and effort it takes to peel them makes it a pain in the ass for sure. Some people are better at peeling than others, and I'm better than average I'd say but it still can cut up your fingers. Also. With the time it takes to peel them versus the low yield, I usually just have to fill up with the corn and potatoes. Otherwise I'll just be hungry still no matter the amount. Still a fun and tasty event. Eating crawfish is a fun thing to do with a bunch of friends slash family. 
sit around a table, make a mess, have a few beers, and have some fun conversations. But yeah, it's a pain in the ass to peel them and I'm not very good at it. I'm not from the south so I rarely practice, I also will just go ahead and eat more corn slash taters to fill myself up. Light cheese. You gotta twist them off the branch, peel off the rough skin, chew the sweet delicious fruity flesh off and somehow prevent yourself from accidentally swallowing the stone. But it's worth it for that sweet goodness. Huh, I've always thought light cheese are quite simple and easy to eat. Break through the skin with your fingernail around it, crack it open and you can plop out the lump of flesh like an eyeball. Cadbury eclairs. One of my favorite chocolates but they're so hard to chew. Plus, once you manage to actually bite into it it gets so stuck in your teeth. Or you get cocky and try to eat two at once and then your mouth is glued shut for the next half an hour. That's definitely never happened to me. As a Marylander steamed crabs. I see a lot of people saying crawfish and crab legs, but steamed crabs take the cake. There's so much work just for minuscule amounts of crab meat, and there's many different ways to pick a crab. Each crab takes about 2 minutes, and that's if you're decent. The payoff is well worth it because there's nothing like crabs with some old bay and a natty bow on a hot summer day. Don't forget you always end up getting your hands all cut up by the spikes and the salt and old bay gets crammed up in there. Soup dumplings are incredible. Unfortunately, they require picking it up with tongs to avoid breaking it and letting it leak, placing the dumpling on a spoon, biting the top portion off only, taking a spoon of vinegar or soy sauce, and pouring it into the open part, eating it whole. The first few tries, I kept breaking them and it leaked, essentially ruining it. Tongs? What? Use chopsticks. Pick up the dumpling from the folds. There should be anywhere between 8 to 12 folds depending on who made them. Guaranteed not to break it that way. Oranges. I need to mentally hype myself up to peel an orange. I'm not talking about the Wisatsumas, sumas, no. I'm talking about the oranges with the thick skin that you need to claw your way into and then find orange zest under your fingernails for the next week. Love me an orange though. Popcorn, the little stupid stuff gets stuck in your gums and then you have to pull it out. One time a piece got stuck and made my gum bleed so much it looked like I just tried to drank someone's blood. I've had a kernel shell stuck in my throat for like 6 days at this point. I can't tell if it eroding or if my body is just not as annoyed by it anymore since it stopped hurting. Kiwis taste beautiful but they leave an annoying feeling in your tongue. Like you just sipped boiling water. Careful with that. I'd always said as a kid that kiwis tasted good but that they made my mouth feel funny. Last time I had one as an adult, throat swelled up closed, almost couldn't breathe until I vomited, and took the rest of the day to recover. A mild allergy can definitely worsen over time without you knowing, especially if you eat it so infrequently due to that annoying feeling. Corn. It's not particularly hard to eat but it's just annoying to eat. It's delicious and I love it with salt, pepper, and butter, but the kernels always get stuck in my teeth and it stays there for far too long and can be difficult to remove. I came here for sweet corn on the cob. Absolute pain in the ass, from unsheathing, deskilling, boiling, trying to get that damn cob holders in the end, slathering it down with butter, none of this includes the pain in the ass it is to eat it. Butter and juice burning your lip, running down your face, kernels stuck between every tooth. But my god is it delicious. Artichokes. Prep them while raw to make this easier. First cut the tip off, then in half right down the middle lengthwise. After steaming them, scoop the hairy part and some of the innermost leaves out with a spoon. Comes right out and is then easy to eat, and an easier portion if it's a huge artichoke. I see a lot of articles recommending taking the hairy part out before steaming, but it's way harder and I don't get why you wouldn't just wait for it to soften. Turmeric is so healthy for inflammation and brain disease but get that stuff on your clothes. Also mangoes teens. A delicious fruit about the size of a grape but the shell is the size of a small lemon and hard as wood and slippery to cut. Put the mangoes teen between your palms and press until it cracks a little, showing the flesh inside. Then you can peel the skin off and enjoy. Whole artichokes. It's a hassle to cut them, remove the choke, and then when they're ready you have to bite the leaf just right to avoid it splitting and getting the fibers in your mouth. Still, nothing beats a fresh artichoke. Canned artichoke hearts can't scratch that itch. Just ate one last night. The fur didn't want to release from the heart. Why is no one mentioning fish it has so many spikes, is there any fish or any way of cutting fish that removes every spike? I am from third world and have heard about MCD filet o fish, like, how does that fish doesn't have spikes? Enlighten me please. Not a big fish expert and also never had a filet o fish but where I live you can buy filets of fish in the supermarket. Basically the people preparing it know where to cut to not have any fish bones. 
It's not a 100% fail proof method, I've found a fish bone in my fish fillet a couple of times, but those are definitely more the exception than the rule. Though I do feel like pocking at a whole piece of cooked fish to get every last bite, also has its charm. I'm surprised no one said the durian. It's delicious but the smell is disgusting. I'm convinced durian love slash hate is genetic, like why cilantro tastes like soap to some people. My only taste of durian was a durian McFlurry in Singapore, which was A-OK -okay for the first few bites. The texture of frozen durian was like mango, and the flavor not too strong. But as it thought it got stronger and stronger, and soon I couldn't stomach it and passed it off to a friend. I'm in the it smells like gasoline camp, although when my dog started have anal gland issues I recognize that smell is reminding me of durian. Yikes! Cherries with seeds. Also watermelon. Every summer for like 5 years I've told myself I need to buy a cherry pitter. I love cherries especially Reiner cherries. So here we are on the cusp of delicious cherry season and do I have a cherry pitter? Of course not. It's pretty fun to eat around the pit then see how far I can spit them. Crab legs. First half, it is like getting in a fight with a big bug and usually there is not enough to fill me up so I am always hungry afterwards. Then they are just so messy to eat. When my husband is out of town, I sit naked on a towel at the dining room, pull my hair back and get cracking, letting the melted butter run down my face, arms and chest. He would be mortified to see me getting all primal. You should definitely do this with your husband. My guy and I do crawfish slash seafood boils regularly and our rule is, if the juice is below your elbow, you lick it off yourself, if it gets past your elbow the other person licks it off. Fun times all around. Trout. Getting the spine and bones out is a pain. I'm pretty sure more of a pain than fish on average. If you have the entire trout, like you caught it yourself, then there's a method where you can cook the entire thing. Then after it's done you make some snips at the tail, pull on the tail, and the spine and bones comes out pretty easily. However, if you don't want to go that route and you want to fillet it, good luck. Also seems like fillets you get from the store will often have bones in them. Cream slices. Layer of pastry on the bottom. Layer on the top with some icing and F all around the edges to stop all the cream splooging out as soon as you try to take a bite. Messy, but delicious. Good answer, I agree. They are in that category of foods that are so delicious to me that I have to stay away, because if I start I'll find it hard to stop. Avocados. I hate having to creatively cut them, and then when I do, if they're just a little over ripened, they're brown in spots, so you don't get the full avocado. But if they're hard it's much worse because then you're just eating hard butter and it's sad. 2 tips. Cut the avocado in quarters. Cut it in half long ways, then, leaving the halves together, cut it in half again the other way, around the middle. Twist in both directions. The pit should basically fall out once you take it apart, and then you can just peel off the skin. Works 99% of the time. Try to buy avocados right before they feel like they're perfectly ripe. Leave them out overnight, then put them in the fridge in the morning. They will stay ripe and not rotten for quite a while. For me it'd be Big Macs from McDonald's. Every time I get one I have to shovel off the mass amount of lettuce they put on there, evenly spread about the sauce with the pickles so I don't get one absolutely dry bite in one saucy bite. Even then, while I'm eating it bits and pieces will fall down my arm and annoy the F out of me, while the actual burger itself is probably sliding about out of center from the bun. There's a way to eat burgers like this. Pick it up the way you see it done in commercials, with your fingers on top and your thumbs on the bottom near the front. Then move your pinkies from the top of the burger to the bottom, at the back, and make sure your index, middle, and ring fingers are covering all of the top, from front to back. That way, you can lightly squeeze your pinkies against your ring fingers to keep the back of the burger from falling apart and everything falling out, and squeeze your thumbs against your index fingers to prevent the same thing at the front. In addition, it lets you press on the top of the burger with your middle fingers, so all the ingredients, and sauces, don't huddle up and try and ambush you if you take a big bite, you can gradually increase the pressure and nibble away at them, as they're pushed out of the front of the burger at a 100% controlled rate. That cuts the burger down to size and makes it easy to polish off, while vastly decreasing the chance that it will explode into layers of stuff going in all directions, or blast you, or the person across the table from you, with your sauce. Basically. It gives you a full control grip on the burger from all directions, so it can't go off like a culinary grenade. Milfouillet. Can't eat them with hands without them collapsing and squishing everywhere. If you try to be clever, and use a knife and fork, tipping them on the side, the top flap usually flaps back onto the plate with the topping sticking to it. Disaster. Watermelons are a pain in the ass to cut. Especially if you cube it or make watermelon balls. 
cut in half starting at the stem, or hot dog style. Then cut the two halves into quarters starting at the stem again. Next, remove the rind from the good stuff by sliding the knife from end to end. Rest the watermelon on a flat edge and horizontally cut 2-3 to three strips depending on thickness. Then cut vertical strips to desired thickness. Finally, one last series of cuts to make the stack watermelon strips into cubes. Used to work produce in a grocery store, made fruit salad every day. Watermelons take 2-3 to three minutes tops. Cantaloupe on the other hand is annoying AF to cut, don't get me started on honeydew.